I love French cleats, and as you can tell behind me, I have a ton of them in my shop. I've literally made hundreds of these over the past few years, but I've also made a bunch of mistakes, and I wanted to go through a few of those so you don't have to. Let's begin. Now back when I started building French cleats, I did a lot of stuff with pallets, as you can see from this pallet wall that's behind me. Now, pallets may be good for some projects, but when it comes to French cleats, no, not a good idea at all. In fact, I actually tried making some French cleats using pallets, as you can see here. You can roll if you can see it, and there's one below it. The thing about pallet wood, it is very inconsistent in thickness. And one thing about French cleats is you need it to be consistently the same throughout your whole shop or wherever you're going to put them. So using pallet wood, not a great idea. Now another mistake I made when I was adding these pallet wood cleats is I didn't use the standard two screws. You can see here, this was the holes, the originally nails from the pallet woods came out. So it looks like screws, but they're not. I actually used brad nails. I'm not sure exactly what I was thinking at the time. I'm guessing it was just a quick way to put them up but I don't recommend this for a few reasons. One, well, it's just nails. You can easily pull them out if you put too much weight on the top of your cleat. Because remember, your cleats are kind of pivoting and they're trying to pull away from the wall. And two, if you ever need to move or reorganize your shop like I'm gonna try and do now, well, I'm gonna have to use a pry bar to pry all these out. Instead of just taking out simple screws and getting it off the wall quickly, moving it around, I'm gonna have to take a chance of messing up the wall behind it by using a pry bar. I also have some really cool tool holders that I've built over time, but unfortunately, I again used pallet wood for the back cleats. I looked at this and I tried to see if I could pry it off. Unfortunately, I glued it together. So that means I'm probably gonna have to break this off. There's a good chance I'm gonna mess up my tool holders or may even have to remake the whole thing. So whenever you're doing this, make sure to use one consistent size. Now when I first started getting serious about French cleats, I wanted everything to fit nice and tight up against the wall. So when I was cutting these out on the table saw, I left these nice and sharp right here on the edge. Because in my head, leaving that sharp would have a nice tight fit and everything would fit perfect up on the wall. But there's actually a few reasons that's not a good idea. First off, by chance, if you were to put your cleat up on your wall, just a little bit off center, you could dent these edges deforming it, or if you pull it a little bit awkwardly, you could break off edges and therefore just making your whole cleat system a little less effective because you have rough edges along the whole sliding system. Now, if by chance you were in your shop and you tripped or you fell and you grabbed onto the wall, you could easily cut yourself. Or if you were putting a cleat holder back on the wall, same thing. If you pinched your finger, you could easily cut yourself. Now there's one last thing. If by chance, of course you're in a wood shop, you're gonna create dust, right? Well that dust is gonna slowly collect up on your cleats up on your wall. You can blow them out occasionally, but you're gonna get fragments up in there that don't come out. But have everything nice and sharp, sometimes that's gonna interfere with you getting your cleats up on your wall the appropriate fashion. So, the trick is if you actually just cut down the edge right here about an eighth of an inch. Here's a couple ways to do that. Now there's a good chance you use a table saw to cut your 45 degree angle for your French cleats. Once you've done that, turn your blade back to 90 degrees and then measure it up so that you're going to remove about an eighth of an inch and run it through the table saw removing that sharp edge. And that'll make quick work of that. Now if by chance you've cut out your French cleats and you forgot to remove that eighth of an inch and let's just say you've walked away from your table saw, there is another way to do that. Get yourself some sand paper and you want to go along that edge. You're just trying to remove that sharp edge and get it nice and dull. I've done this on a few of my other cleats and they work well. Now when I first started building the tool holders for the French cleats, I bought a bunch of these little ones that could hold individual tools on it. They were cool, at least in my head at the time, but considering how lightweight these are, whenever they're up on your wall, if you happen to be walking by and bump them, or if you're trying to grab a tool real quick, they come off really easy because they're so lightweight. So remember, whenever you're building your tool holders for your cleats, have a little weight to them. That way they're less likely to fall off. Now in the process of building all my cleats, I didn't take into consideration sometimes what I was putting together. I was trying to build stuff really, really fast so I could have everything up on the wall. But sometimes, it might be a little bit hard to tell on this, you'll have it where your wood starts to warp and it gets all wavy. This right here was one of my holders that I'm having to redesign because all my tools that were sitting on top of it now are a little bit crooked and I 
it just bothers me. Now, if you're using solid wood, there's a good chance that will probably happen more often than if you're using plywood, but plywood can warp over time too. So whatever you're designing, try and keep that in mind that you're in an ever-changing climate in your workshop, especially if you're out in your own little building, your temperatures are gonna change, your humidity is gonna change, things are gonna change in your shop and on your holders. So there's a good way to prevent that. You could always do some kind of a, maybe a lacquer or polyurethane or something to go over your tool holder. That will help minimize some of that. But just keep in mind that your wood will change and and, well, take that into consideration when you're building your holder. And here's another little tip that took me a little bit to catch on to. Whenever you're building your holder, specifically for certain tools, it's a good idea to leave one or two extra slots because as your tools grow, you don't have to worry about building a new holder for every single tool. You can go in and just insert them into the current slots right next to the others. Now, of course, if you just want to make everything nice and perfect and even, you can, but just be prepared. You're gonna have to build a lot more holders as you grow. Now, this was one of my first holders that I built. This right here holds my drills, some batteries, some chargers, some drill bits, and a few other things. I love this setup, but I did not take into consideration what it was going to do. For example, if you look under here, right behind it, I have a cleat, just a strip there, that I don't have anything on. That's because this right here is taking up that space. I didn't think that through when I was gonna have all the, these drills hanging below it. But that's okay. I love where it's at, and I'm gonna leave it there. So keep that in mind when you're making large holders and anything that might be hanging off the sides or under it that right there is going to take up cleat space take up your wall space so keep that in mind now over time we're going to have to redesign and build new tool holders for your tools that's just a fact of life because as we upgrade tools or we buy new ones things are going to be a little bit different and we're going to have to change them now this doesn't matter if you have french cleats or if you have any other type of wall holder system you're going to have to modify over time so don't let that deter you from french cleats now if you want a bunch of ideas, literally hundreds of ideas of French cleats, I have a playlist right over here. Make sure you check that out.